You're watching the SEC on ESPN. We're in Fayetteville, Bud Walton Arena, one of the best venues in the SEC. And tonight, it's the eighth-ranked Tennessee Volunteers taking on the Arkansas Razorbacks. Let's take a look at the SEC standings. And for Tennessee, their goal is to win the conference, but they cannot afford any more slip-ups. Hey, happy Valentine's Day, everyone. I'm Brian Custer alongside my partner, Jimmy Dykes. And, you know, listen, Arkansas coming up on a really good win over yeah. Georgia. They've beaten Tennessee seven straight times inside this venue. But Tennessee's one of the best teams in the SEC, and they've got the second leading score in Dalton tonight. Yeah, well, this building has a lot of impact on games, Brian, and Bud Walton Arena is alive right now. And Dalton Connect's going to have a ton of attention on him, and rightfully so. The versatility in this kid's game is as good as you're going to find at the college level. Big time score, averaging about 28 over the last nine ball games. A lot of defensive heat will go towards number three in orange from Eric Musselman's guys tonight. This is the 48th meeting between Tennessee and Arkansas, a series that dates back all the way to 1936. Doug Shouse, Joe Lindsay, and Orlandis Poole are our officials, and it's the Volunteers who control the tip in the visiting orange. And right away, Viscovi to Ziegler, who will run the show for Tennessee. Tried to get it inside, and that's a kick on L. Ellis. I think both teams want to establish those points in the paint early. Arkansas, that's their strength right now offensively with Mitchell and Graham and obviously Rick Barnes. He sets the tone in every game, trying to get zero in orange, a do a touch early. Tennessee coming off that loss to Texas A&M and they Man. throw it up, Dalton Connect throws it down. Man, what an explosive athlete. I mean, he does so many things. A guy that is wired to score. He is threat number one, two, and three on baseline out of bounds under. Second in the SEC in scoring averages 20, but on the road averages 27.9. Here's Jermon Mark. Step back. Got it. It's a three. Uh, Tennessee's going to play the percentages early. Arkansas only making five three-point shots a game in conference play. Therefore, you give a little bit of a buffer to start the game for Tennessee. Here's a Kai Ziegler to connect inside to Adu, and he rocks the rim. And they are so good, Tennessee, that empty corner ball screen action, and Adu at seven feet, so strong, man, just getting three offensive rebounds a game. He's a key piece for Rick Barnes once we get to March. One-point lead for Tennessee. Stolen. And here comes Josiah Jordan-James. Viscovi. Back out to James for three. Yes. Man, Brian, really good action. Set up with this little crossing action up top. Forced the Arkansas defense to shrink to the ball. Josiah Jordan James with a trail. Four point lead for the Volunteers. We played a couple of minutes here in the first half. They'll go inside. Jalen Graham. Kick back to Mark. Mark. Good dish inside. And Chandler Lawson will go to the line. Brian's a good job by Tremont Mark to drive the close out of Tennessee. Well, let's go back early to Dalton Connect. When you're averaging what he does, you're scoring the ball in a lot of ways. And I talked about Tennessee's out of bounds under defense. Those plays are always designed as three is the first option. And there's that empty corner. Just no help at all for Adu rolling to the rim. Claw Lawson knocked down that first free throw. This guy has a 7-7 seven, seven wingspan. It would be number five in the NBA right now. I mean, that's, <laughs> and he's a productive kid. He's making about 54% of his shots when he's on the floor. I mean, his wingspan is needed against the length of Tennessee inside tonight. Arkansas 8-2 and two when Lawson starts. And Viscovi coming off that screen, draws the foul. How about Eric Musselman, his 14th different starting lineup on the season? That's a sign of a coach that's still searching in mid-February, trying to figure out and push the right buttons. Muss in his fifth season. He's taken Arkansas to NCAA tournament the last three seasons. 
Here's Mark. Mark fifth in the FCC in scoring. Jalen Graham back out to Mark. Triple's good. You don't want to let Mark get started if you're Arkansas. He's 37% on the year. And Tennessee was short closeouts, and Mark's making them pay. Average of 17 is a guy Ziegler lays it in. Boy, how good has he been lately, huh? 58 points, 28 assists, and 12 steals over his last three games. As good as anybody in college ball over that stretch. And let's not forget 12 rebounds yes. as well. It's a, a mighty might. Yes, it's the he DNA is. of this Tennessee program. At 5-9, Ellis from downtown. The same thing happened to Tennessee on Saturday night at Texas A&M. A&M not known as a three-point shooting team. Shot the lights out early, and Tennessee had to try to dig out of a hole. So far, Arkansas perfect. From distance, they get a steal. Davis lays it in. And listen to Bud Walton early. Connect off the pin down. Too strong. Rebound Graham. Ellis thought about it. No go to Graham. Spins on Connect. Shot no good. A do the board. Here comes the volunteer. Ziegler from deep. And Viscovi chases it down. Viscovi is so good in loose ball situations. Connect will pull it and knock it down. Man, the, the, the shot range of this kid is as deep as there is in college basketball. But the effort of Viscovi, a phenomenal cutter and a phenomenal fly around guy on the offensive glass. First break of the action, and it's Arkansas with a one-point lead. Time now to take a look at tonight's Principal Wooden Watch. Well, it's Dalton Connect, and I want to break down the versatility of this kid. He has taken 70 field goal attempts, Brian, in transition. Now look what he's done off of screens. 61 shot attempts off of screens. He's so good at that pin down action into jump shots. How about this? 59 shots coming into tonight off of spot up catch and shoot variety. And look, 45 times he shot the ball as a pick and roll handler. That's as good a versatility as we have in all of college basketball for a 6 6 guard. And man, he shot the ball well at AM Saturday, 6 out of 11 from the three point line. He's not going to get 35 every night, but he's capable of getting 35 every night. Well, let me tell you something. He has scored 35 or more three times this season as you take a look. Second leading scorer in the SEC. That three he just knocked down, that was his 500th career field goal made in just 91 Division I appearances. Adu, shot rejected. That's what Arkansas does best. Devo Davis rejected by Connect. Back and forth we go. Siegler throws it up. And James couldn't handle it. And Davis finishes. Wow. Arkansas likes chaos, especially in this building. And that's not Tennessee's strength. And they got caught up in a chaotic 45 seconds. James misses a three. We got a foul underneath. Second foul on Lawson. You know, Arkansas, to your point, one of the top shot blocking teams in college ball. That's just an easy. Fifth grade run out layup by Devo Davis. And Davis missed three games and came back on Saturday. The trusted Eric Musselman has in him. He played in 34 minutes. And the guy just makes winning plays. Doesn't always have huge numbers, but you go back and grade the film, just involved in a lot of good stuff for Arkansas. So Lawson will sit with those two personals. And Makai Mitchell will come in. Mitchell's playing probably the best basketball in his Arkansas career lately. Graham was asking for it, but stolen. Jordan Ganey, who just checked in. 
And he takes it all the way. No, but the follow-up is good by Jonas Adu. How about the run ability of Jonas Adu? Is a seven-footer, man, to get up and even with the ball. And Ganey, man, with his that run-through ability, you cannot make a weak pass against the fifth-best defense in all of college ball. That's what Tennessee is. Here's Mark. We play six minutes here in the first half. Mark blocked by Connect. Ganey will pull up and knock it down. Man, big bucket and big minutes by Ganey early. He's a real spark plug offensively off the bench. The depth of Tennessee this year offensively is as good as it's been under Rick Barnes. Ganey is the junior. He's out of Tucson, and he averages seven a game. Brian, how about the block shot by Connect, man? The long arms. And the 6-6 reach, phenomenal on the last possession. Five on the shot clock. Mitchell in the ground. He spins with one. You got to get it up. And they don't. Right, Tennessee is the number six adjusted defensive team in the country. And they can put you in long offensive possessions. And Arkansas is going to have to handle that shot clock late in this game multiple times. Look at Ganey gets out, man, runs through the pass. And very strong. But that's what I'm most impressed with is Adu as a seven-footer. And Connect, he's has really grown into a trusted defender in the eyes of Rick Barnes. Here's Ganey. Ziegler off the screen. Drives, gets in the lane, rejected. Arkansas second in the NCAA in block shots. Ganey, though, the floater's good. And how good has Ganey been in that pull-up jump shot? That's that six, seven-foot range is awfully difficult. Man, Tennessee, they are so good in their off-ball movement, just making that defense work. Razorbacks average six and a half blocks a game. Mark draws the personal. Watch Ganey right here. This is the second kind of a tough two that he's taken in this game. He's got a lot of pop, though, a lot of elevation. Gets it off against Link defensively. Brian, early in this game, Rick Barnes' guys are really loading up to the ball when Tremont Mark has it. They're putting a second and third defender in his vision every time. Want to make him play through a crowd. He's not on the floor now, but they are loading up to that Tremont mark. Coach Barn in his ninth season at Tennessee. You know, he's led the volunteers to five straight NCAA tournament appearances. Well, they are the real deal this year. There's top 20 in both offensive and defensive efficiency right there with Houston, Auburn, Purdue, Arizona, and UConn. There's only six teams that can say that, and Tennessee's one of them. Here's L. Ellis. They work it around. Davenport's got an open three. Knocks it down. Really well done by Arkansas. They got that ball on the baseline and got Tennessee in a defensive rotation. It's not easy to do. Jeremiah Davenport, who has checked in. We're all tied at 18. Ganey still has the hot hand. Yes, he sure does. I mean, Ganey is, he came in as a big time scorer when he transferred in, averaging about 18 or 19 at SC Upstate. Really good. I mean, beautiful with a pull up jump shot so far. Jumper. No good by Keon Minifield. And no threat on the offensive glass by Arkansas. They're at the bottom of the league in offensive rebounds. Oh, and connect. Man, Brian, Change think about this. Yeah, yeah. Lays it yes, in. but Arkansas doesn't go to the offensive glass, and they don't get back. Man, two big-time sins committed by Arkansas within a 10-second window. Connect now got seven. Speed surprised you a little bit, didn't it? They did. <laughs> Here's Davenport again, and the jumper's good again. Just not enough fight over the top of that screen by Tennessee, and Davenport, big physical guard, finds the elbow. 
Both teams shooting it well. Tennessee 55% from the field. Arkansas 63%. You know, Dalton Connect, you see his size, his jump shot ability, but his explosiveness in transition. I mean, he's got a speed and a gear, and that first long scoring step is. Brian, we're seeing it all from Dalton Connect early in this game. Baseline out of bounds under, he's the finisher. And this is the third straight game Dalton Connect has multiple blocks. So defensively, he's growing up, and man, can he spin it? Look at the spin on that ball. It's the same every single time that he shoots it. I mean, he has worked and worked and worked in that weight room. He's gained about 25%, they tell me, in the explosiveness from the time he first arrived on campus. And there's probably a lot of there's probably a lot of volunteer fans <laughs> liking that sign. Listen, there was a lot of there's a lot of pros and scouts here. Uh, Sam Presti from the Oklahoma City Thunder here as well, taking a look at Dalton Kennedy. They want him to be their Valentine. <laughs> Come, <laughs> no <draft doubt>. <laughs> Come draft. Come no draft. No doubt. You know, connect. We had a great conversation at shoot around. He said one of the reasons why he, he wanted to come to Tennessee, he said, look, Coach Rick Barnes, he loves Kevin Durant. He said, Coach Rick Barnes told me that, that was my guy. He could make me, help me become a pro, put on 20 pounds of muscle. Yeah. And he said he was going to help me with my defense. And you, you talked about the Ooh. multiple blocks that he's had here the past couple of games. And he gets a steal right on cue and dunks it home. Just an explosive athlete. And it, Arkansas has been careless with this ball early. Three steals already, I believe, for Tennessee. Volunteers are dominating points in the paint. 14 of them have come in the paint for Tennessee out of that 26. Just four for Arkansas thus far. And those paint points have been the strength of Arkansas the last two or three ball games between Mitchell and Graham. Dalton Connect has really grown defensively. He goes at it with the wrong hand, but it pays off well. You're just not going to catch him in the open floor. He's too big and too long and too fast. Inside the Mitchell, and that one's rejected by Adu. Mark off the mark and connect with the rebound. Brian, Tennessee really heavy in their gap defense right now, forcing Arkansas to a jump shooting team. L. Ellis, three no good. It's Kogi, the board. We're inside 10 minutes until the half. Adu from 12. He is a key guy for Tennessee if they're going to be a legitimate Final Four team. And Rick Barnes trusts this big seven-footer to take those 15-footers. And a good find by Ganey. Volunteers have knocked down seven of their last nine shots. Air's nearly a steal. Tennessee's defense just smothering right now. And Arkansas a little bit of over dribbling. They're going to have to move that thing side to side and try to get Tennessee in some defensive rotations. Not easy to do. Again, Tennessee, one of the best defensive teams in the entire country on display right now. Here's Graham. Jump hook is short. And get no one to the offensive glass for Arkansas. Adu with the left hand. Wow. A seven footer outside the lane. But he's really good with that left paw. That, that's not by accident. He works on that every single day. Lead is now double digits for the Volunteers. Davis from deep, no good. But again, heavy gap help on Mark, forcing him to pass the ball instead of the isolation one-on-one. -on -one. Here's a rebound by Graham. You know, Razorbacks 0-11 when trailing by 10 or more points at any point in the game. Right now, the lead is 10. Yeah, Jonas Adu 
Talked about him earlier, and the thing that I love about this kid, Brian, he has only turned it over six times in 270 SEC minutes. Mm. He's got a really good set of soft paws. They're sticky when he's in traffic. Doesn't fumble passes, secures rebounds. You're going to win that national championship this year, get to the Final Four. You've got to have a legit post player because there's really good ones on those top ten teams. Here's Ganey. Five now on the shot clock for Tennessee. And Ganey turns it over. Minifield lays it in. Now, Tennessee over dribbled. Ganey was guilty of it in Arkansas. They get those steals going and get this building back in the ballgame. It's a big deal. And the reach in on Keon Minifield. 7-16 until the half. Brian, I keep saying that Jonas Adu is a key guy going forward for Tennessee. I mean, he's rugged. He's a very vocal defender on the back line talking to his team defensively through ball screen coverage. This is a mature, older team, and Adu, as a seven-footer, is so good with his left hand. I'd already talked about how he doesn't fumble balls, but I think defensively, he's a guy that can hold up when you go against the Donovan Klingons and the Zach Eadies, the Hunter Dickinsons that Tennessee's gonna have to work their way through. Tennessee's not gonna get pumped as long as Jonas Adu continues to play with the confidence and the force that he's played with so far in SEC play. Averages 11 points per game. He's already got eight, seven rebounds as well. He is third in the SEC in blocks. To go with that offensive production. Five, throwing it up to Adu. He couldn't finish. Mark inside the Graham. He'll kick it back out. Strip by Zakai Ziegler. That's that gap defense that is so heavy on Tremont Mark. Oh, connect! <laughs> I'm telling you, he is a pro playing in the college game tonight. Tennessee on a 14-4 run. And Connect knocks that one away. He is so fast and long with his first step. A scoring step and from the logo with mm. two hands. And he's, he's on a path right now for a 30-point game again on the road. Second in the conference is scoring averages 20. 26 in SEC games. 27 is what he averages on the road. That three from long range is good. Can lead battle. As Kobe misses. And they do can't grab the board. No. Battles a kid that can give Arkansas an offensive spark. And he has a nice elevation on his jump shot. He shoots it from deep. That one was probably, you know, three or four steps behind that three-point line. Graham. Spins, jump hook, yes. He is a spinner for a big kid. He's really good at spinning off defense and getting that shot up. And Arkansas has got some life offensively all of a sudden. Lead has been cut in half to just five. It was ten. Connect in the Adu, knocked away and stolen by the Razorbacks. Probably one that Dalton Connect should have shot himself, right? Mark. Draws the foul on the drive. That'll be on Josiah Jordan James. Arkansas hanging in this game. They've knocked down five other nine three point shots. They are averaging making less than five a game in SEC play at 28%. But they're taking what the defense has given them because Tennessee really choking off anything trying to get in the seams and get to the paint. 
Jalen Graham will have a seat. Makai Mitchell check back in. He's got the ball now, gives it back up. Battle. That three is too strong. And here's Mitchell with the offensive board. He'll go to the line. Yeah, good job by Mitchell to find that backside. And those missed three point shots from the wing down to the corner are going to come off that far side more times than not. Two shots. Talked about Mitchell playing really the best stretch of his career. He's scored in double figures in four straight games now. That's the first time he's done that in his career. The first one rolls off. Hey, don't forget Saturday, we got a triple header of action on ESPN. Ninth ranked Duke, Florida State's at two. You got six ranked Kansas taking on Oklahoma. And then finally, you got Kentucky and Auburn squaring off in a sonic blockbuster. It will be. Another great day of hoops on the network. Good luck to Kentucky winning in Neville Arena at Auburn. And if that, that place is as good as there is in all of college basketball right now. Hogs on a 6-0 run. James and one. Brian, what a tough play and a smart play by Josiah Jordan James. A strong shot fake, and then he gets down that slot and fights his way through contact. The shot fake, he battles through the initial contact, and then it's the second contact that gets called. I was reminded today how important Josiah Jordan James and Santi Vescovi, their voice is in practice. They, they could handle the practice themselves if Rick Barnes wasn't on the floor. That's how mature they are. Tennessee. Knocked down eight of their last 11 shots. Here's Davis. Devo knocks it down. Really good job by Davis to take what the defense gave him again. You're not going to get to the rim against Tennessee. But you're going to have to make some hard guarded twos, and four and white is very good at it. They'll call that one on Davis. See Muss talking about some of the the calls that have been made here tonight. Yeah, Tennessee is really good at aligning in, the, in a similar alignment, but different actions off of it. But three and orange is always the problem. You talked about me. There he is. That one's too strong. Here's L. Ellis in the Mitchell. Battle and a block on Viscovi. Five point lead for the Volunteers, less than four. Is it Viscovi or Viscovi? You guys are confusing me. With Rick Barnes, it depends on how he's playing. That's true. If he's playing well, it's Vescovi. If he's not playing well, it's Vescovi. <laughs> it is the Volunteers up five over at Arkansas. You know, before this game, one of the things they did here was they paid tribute to a man named Dean Weber. Dean Weber was a longtime athletic trainer here at Arkansas. He was part of the school foundation. He died last night. So. Yeah, one of the most beloved guys ever in the state of Arkansas. And every Arkansas athlete that's come through Fayetteville over the last 30, 40 years, Dean Weber was their friend. Yeah. And uh, he poured his life into the Razorback Athletics, Razorback Foundation. And there's a big empty big empty spot in a lot of people's hearts in this state right now with the loss of Dean Weber. Certainly condolences to the Weber family. Here's Caleb Battle. Knocks down both of them. And now the lead is just three. Keep in mind it was ten. Here's Ziegler. Drive, scoops it up. No, Adu, yes! Yeah, the value of a small guard that can get the ball up on the glass when you've got a seven-footer 
that is so good finding the front of the rim. Talking about Jonas Adu. Look at the second chance points for Tennessee compared to Arkansas. Ellis stopped by Adu and stolen by Ganey. Ganey and wow. one. What a, what a finish, shot. Right? And Ganey has been phenomenal off the bench. I think Coach Cream was talking about the balance of Tennessee offensively. Adu with 10, Ganey with 8, Connect with 11. And this kid has just been so good driving the ball with force through contact two or three times in this first half. The one thing Tennessee has done to Eric Musselman's team tonight, they have taken away the role man out of Arkansas's offense. Makai Mitchell and Graham are so good at setting ball screens and rolling out of it. No room tonight. Tennessee, are, they're hitting that roll guy, taking away the, that middle ball screen action. One of the things they worked on is shoot around today, too. Yeah, absolutely. Specifically. Three minutes to the half. The drive, yes, by Battle hanging and scoring. He does have courage, talking about Caleb Battle. And it's not easy to find a seam to drive against Tennessee, but you get that closeout coming at you and find a little bit of a gap because he plays off of two feet. Brian, and keeps the ball tight. Really good job by Battle, man, just to force the action and get himself an and one opportunity. Free throw is good. Lead is five. That's the kind of game Arkansas just hanging around, a top 10 team. We've seen them put it on Duke in this building this year. They put it on Purdue in an exhibition game. They played well against Kentucky, couldn't finish it off. Adu is putting on an exhibition when it comes to dunking <laughs> in the post. Tennessee now with seven dunks in this game. That's a season high for Tennessee this season. Man, Adu can do, right? Six out of eight in this game. Just no answer for the size or the length of the strength of Jonas Adu. And Rick Barnes, he's been around the block a few times. He's going to be a first-time Hall of Fame guy. When the building gets loud, he's pounding that thing inside. Yeah. Your pressure release right now is Jonas Adu. And, and what, again, another thing that they talked about is shoot around is we got to get the ball inside to Adu. And it's paying off. Davis, midfield. And in that corner, it is good. By Davenport. It's not easy to get a wide open three against Tennessee, but you find that backside pass to Davenport sitting in that corner. I think he's a better shooter from the right side than the left corner. And that's exactly where he knocked it down from. Adu has it stolen by Tremont Mark. Mark for three. In and out. Oh, man, that was all in until it popped out, was it not? You're right. They reach in on Ziegler as Graham and Arkansas. Hey, the South Carolina women, of course, the nation's only undefeated Division I squad. They highlight our ESPN Thursday basketball. They square off against Rakia Jackson and the Lady Vols in Knoxville. And our coverage begins at 7 Eastern. Here's Mark. Davenport again. That was a short. Ninety seconds until the half. Oh, good defense. <laughs> Right, Tennessee over dribbling that possession. That's not Tennessee's strength. Their, their strength is to move that ball side to side and get off ball action going. Vescovy gets stuck. Yeah, the battle was all over him, but volunteers get a steal. Ziegler wow. lays it right in. Hugo Davis, instead of stopping the ball, gambles, thinking that Ziegler's going to drop it off. Man, is he a defensive pest? A risky, smart defender is double Z.
Mark comes off the screen. A little up and under. And he touched it. Did someone touch it? Yeah, I think, I think that ball was still within that cylinder. Any part of that ball is in or on the cylinder when it gets touched. Mm. I don't know if he don't touched it, though. I don't think it. he touched it. Connect. Misses. Gets his own board. And he'll go to the line. Right. I don't think Arkansas don't think touched, touched that either. ball. It looked really close live. And there was no doubt that the ball was within the cylinder, but I don't think Arkansas touched it. Doug Shaw, Joe Lindsay, and the Landis Pool saw it differently. Yeah. Not reviewable at this point of the game. Potential big call. Coach. First free throw, no good. Sometimes this angle behind the backboard is, is not the one that's the best view that we have. Yeah. Graham immediately says, I did not touch it. Yeah. As good as Dalton Connect is, he is not a great free throw shooter. Only 76%, got one and two. You take Connect out, you save a foul with this last defensive possession for Tennessee. Davis off the glass, nope. I call a timeout. Rick has one to use, absolutely. He'll probably bring Connect back in for offense. That's exactly what he's doing. If you're Tennessee, get it up quick enough to get an offensive rebound opportunity for Adu. Forty-six thirty-eight. And Brian, here's the best view we have. Jalen Graham does not touch this ball. Watch eleven and white. He pulls his hand back right there. There's air the entire time between his hand and the ball. And a missed call. And now Tennessee with a chance for a big bucket before the half. Connect back on the floor. Is he a decoy or is he the finisher on this possession for Tennessee? Here's Connect. Adu comes, sets the screen with 10. Connect. Vescovy. Can't find the range. will go into the locker room with the volunteers up eight. I have time score, Tennessee 46, Arkansas 38. Let's send it to the studio. My man, Kevin Connors, Seth Greenbergs, and Sean. Welcome back, ESPN's college basketball. It's the SEC on ESPN, and it's the Tennessee Volunteers. Taking on Arkansas Razorbacks, and it's the eighth-ranked Volunteers up six, 46 to 40 here as we begin the second half. Brian Custer alongside Jimmy Dykes. By the way, the refs looked at that basket, yep. initially called offensive uh, goaltending on Arkansas. They said no. Bucket is good, so now the lead is just six. But for Tennessee, you talk about spreading the wealth. They've had three guys that's given them a total of 34 points. Absolutely, really good balance. Now, Tennessee can ride the shoulders of Dalton Connect for a long time, but man, it's, it really helps when he gets some help. But Dalton Connect has done damage in this game with 12, uh, yeah, 12 points and the multiple ways that he scores. Ganey and Adu have really stepped up. Adu with 13 first half points. Justin Ganey off the bench with nine. And Tennessee's at their best when that ball is hot and it's moving. They over dribbled a couple of times Tennessee did in the first half, but for the most part, they get that thing side to side and forcing Arkansas to cover multiple actions. Arkansas hanging in this game though, Brian, with a three-point shooting. Not the strength of their team in SEC play. I've mentioned it, they make less than five per game. Arkansas already with six made threes in the first half. Volunteers. Will inbound. Arkansas one and nine. And they've trailed at the half. Only win here at home was against Abilene Christian. And it's Connect going right to work. Just the versatility of Connect. That was a 
an outside post up by your guard and connect is really good man at scoring with his back to the basket off of one bounce Tennessee with 30 points in the paint Tremont off the mark and again a lot of orange jerseys in the attention of Tremont mark when he has that ball in his hands that shot blocked by mark Leaves it for Lawson. His shot blocked by Connect. Got the third block in this game for mm -hmm. Dalton Connect. Zakai for three. He has been money from that three point line. He didn't shoot it well against Texas AM, but he's right at that 37, 38% clip in conference play. Heart and soul of this volunteer squad. And it's Tennessee with their biggest lead of the game at 11. Nearly a turnover by Mark. And they'll go inside to Jalen Graham. Working on James. The junk, junk hook is good. But Brian, that has been Arkansas' strength over the last two or three ball games. Mitchell and Graham on the inside. That's That could be an F1 and maybe should be. I'm not sure if it's an intentional... And Graham got that shoulder stung. He's going to have to come out. I think they will look at this. And maybe not even look at it. I, I don't think that was a legitimate play on the ball, was it? No, that's a hard grab from behind. That's excessive, unnecessary contact in F1. Yeah, the push in the back, too. Especially when a guy's airborne, dangerous. That is the right call. I saw a very similar call last night at Syracuse between Syracuse and North Carolina. You've got to protect those guys out of the breakaway situation. They're airborne shooters. That's an easy call to make for this crew. Connect just one of three from the line. That's on that second one. Graham, by the way, went straight into the locker room. And Brian, remember, number three in orange is the primary focus for Tennessee's out-of-bounds plays, whether it's a side out-of-bounds or a baseline out-of-bounds. The action, the initial action is for Dalton Connect. So Arkansas will go small. Lawson is the tallest guy on the court for them at 6'8". Guys, Igler. Oh, good dish in the wow. Adu. Andrew dunks it home. What a job by Ziegler to get behind the backboard, keep his dribble alive, knowing the entire time that Adu is going to fill that weak side again. The soft paws of Adu. I mean, that is a fastball from about eight feet away. Mm. Season high in dunks for Tennessee. As Tremont Mark knocks it down. He just continues to fight for his spot, Tremont Mark, and his spot is that elbow pull-up jump shot. Adu saves it. Here's Ziegler, three. Nope. Adu, the follow, soft touch, no. Rolls off. Why did Adu not just dunk the ball? I mean, he had a six-foot guard, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> And Ziegler takes this shot, a tough shot, and Adu, when he comes down with it, that's a six-foot guard right in front of you. Adu just got sped up. Keon Minifield will bring it up for the Hogs. Davenport has checked in, too, for Arkansas. Mitchell as well. Mark with five. He'll pull up. Too strong. Adu the rebound. Here comes the Volunteers. Only two offensive rebounds for Arkansas in this game. 
Vescovi in and out. He cannot find the range tonight. Oh, of three from the field he is. That one went right through the hands of Davenport. Brian Arkansas offensively. The first 15 seconds when they take a shot, they're shooting 54% on the year and 35% from three. If it gets under 15 seconds, they only shoot 47% from the floor and 28% from three. And Tennessee's putting them in a lot of long offensive possessions. That's not Arkansas's strength, has not been all year. Josiah Jordan James backs in, oh, knocks it down. How physical was he, right? Just continued to carve out space, isolation game for Josiah Jordan James on the right side so he can get to that left strong hand. And a push underneath. Josiah Jordan James is a big physical guard, a former McDonald's All-American. Tennessee is as physical of a team as there is on both ends of the floor. It's not just how physical they play defense, the physicality offensively in the isolation. Well, here's a look and with Joe Lenardi, AKA Joey Brackets, has so far when you talk about the SEC, on nine teams he's looking at possibly in that NCAA tournament. He's got Tennessee at a two seed. It was what, what, just last week they were basically a one seed. Well, and they're still in position to be a one seed. North Carolina hurt their chances big time last night, losing at Syracuse. Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but in Alabama now has climbed up to a two seed as well. And nine bids out of this league would be an all-time high for the SEC, and that's exactly what they're tracking. Mark three, short. Devo Davis with the offensive board. Right, last time we checked, Auburn was putting it on South Carolina tonight in Auburn. And Bruce Pearl will be the first to tell you he doesn't have the best starting five, but he might have the best starting 10 or 11. That's how deep they go. Not a lot of drop off, and the three ball continues to keep Arkansas with a puncher's chance in this game. And that's Guillaume Minifield knocking it down. And how about Ganey? Oh, this kid has come off the bench and just been awesome. The confidence that Rick Barnes has put in Ganey over the last three or four ball games is starting to blossom. He came in as a legitimate scorer and shooter and has found his groove just the last couple of weeks. He's got 12. Stolen by Connect. Uh, How about the two transfers into Tennessee? Justin Ganey or Jordan Ganey to start with and then Dalton connect with a defensive play. Watch Ganey right here. There's just no, no hesitation at all. That is a beautiful release and rotation on the ball and they connect off of the steal. I mean, he is so forceful bringing that ball. I mean, he's 6'6", probably 215. He talked about his strength gain since he's been in Knoxville. His explosiveness has gone up. Yeah, he does it all. We had the package early. A pick and roll score, a spot up shooter, a scoring phenom. Hey, Saturday over on the SEC Network, college basketball continues. You got the balls hosting Vandy. How about that last second shot Vandy won on last night? That's a six Eastern. Then you got Missouri Ole Miss at the pavilion. Yeah, Ezra Manjohn right there at the buzzer, right, for mm -hmm, Vanderbilt. Mm -hmm. You know, the volunteers. 15 and 2 when they've got three or more guys in double figures. They've got it here tonight. Ganey, Connect, Adu. Here's Ganey. Why not? Scorching hot. Right? Why not? Scorching hot is Jordan Ganey. The advanced pass ahead by Ziegler, and no one in the airspace of Ganey in transition. You give this guy a, a clear look and a clean look. I mean, that's just way too easy. Lack of communication and urgency by Arkansas cost. 
Brian Charles Ballantyne was my roommate back in the day, and he hit one of the most memorable shots in Arkansas basketball history on February the 12th, 1984, down in Pine Bluff. He got that ball on the baseline and knocked down an eight-footer, and then North Carolina, ranked number one at the time, missed one at the buzzer. And Michael Jordan, that crew was loaded. They were undefeated, and we actually flew into Pine Bluff the day of the game because of a storm kept mm. us out of there. But Charles Ballantyne, the next day, the headlines in the sports page across the state of Arkansas said happy Ballantyne's day one of the most <laughs> memorable shots in the history of Arkansas basketball but our good friend Charles Ballantyne passed away uh, this this past August uh -huh. August the second man he was a, a dear dear friend of mine a phenomenal roommate he was a friend to everybody and it's another big hole in the heart of a lot of people in this state when you think about Valentine's Day and think back on the history of this Arkansas program Charles Ballantyne sent North Carolina home with a loss. Talking about power. Tobe Awaka lays that one in. Talking about Arkansas, this is the first time they've been playing on Valentine's Day since 2015. Well, th this kid is a hoss inside, Tobe Awaka. Think about this. He gets 21% of the offensive rebounds when he's on the floor. That's the best in Division I basketball in the country. Mm. He's just not listed because he doesn't play it the high number of minutes. But there's not a better offensive rebounder in college ball than Tobe Awaka. Mm. Here's Minifield. Got the big on him. Davis thought about the three. Good ball fake. Pull up. Missed the open shot. Connect the rebound. Tennessee continues to play the percentage that they are loading up to the ball. Taking away the drive ability. The free throw attempts by Arkansas are not there because they can't beat folks off the bounce. Tennessee has turned Arkansas into a jump shooting team in this game. It's rare Tennessee plays in this building, but they've lost seven straight. Haven't won here since 2009. Well, they didn't have Zakai Ziegler in those games as well. <laughs> He's a Zakai Ziegler came into Tennessee, Brian, and changed the toughness level of a very tough program. And that's what he's been ever since he stepped on that Knoxville campus from Bronx, New York. They might count that. And they yeah. do. Rick Barnes once again posting up Dalton Connect. The versatility of this kid, he's a big guard. They just trust him to catch those step out post block moves, and he's really good, strong, quick, and go either shoulder. Classic hard to guard. This play is under review. Now take another look to see if it. Indeed, gold didn't even count it. What do you think, Jimmy? Catch it. D off the glass. And from that view, it looks like that ball was on its way up, uh, right? Yeah. And not on the glass mm -hmm. yet. It happened so quick. Doesn't touch it. Doesn't touch it. Uh-uh. Mm -hmm. I, I think this gets reversed again. Yeah. The previous call is overturned. It is not goaltending. Therefore, we will shoot two free throws for Tennessee, number three. There you go. Well, NBA All-Star Weekend, it begins Friday. Indianapolis, you've got the celebrity game on ESPN and the app. Stephen A. Smith, Shannon Sharp, they're your head coaches. Our coverage begins 7 Eastern from Lucas Oil Stadium. You're going there, right? I will be there. Boy, what, what are you going to be doing? I'll be there Saturday. They, they do an HBCU Classic game as well. I think it's Winston-Salem State, okay. Virginia Union. Awesome. We'll be playing. Yeah. Just too much from Tennessee in this ball game for Arkansas down 21. James, my math, I see, yeah. My math right? 
<laughs> Your math is right. Okay. It's a 15 2 run by the Volunteers who have made now, what, five straight baskets. Walker. No good. Ziegler. They go inside again. Ziegler will go to the line. Well, that ball has stayed hot, has it not, it for has. Tennessee? It does not get stuck. And this is the moment you think it is stuck. A walk and fires that thing out of there. They get that ball reversed to that weak side and start playing out of a closeout. Tennessee's the real deal. And uh, to me, UConn and Purdue, are, they look a little bit different than everybody else in the country. I think we're headed for a collision course between those two teams mm. in March. But I'm telling you what, Tennessee is right there with the best of the rest of them, if not towards the top of the list. Hell ball. Possession to Arkansas. Arkansas possession. We were visiting with Rick Barnes this afternoon. I asked him how's the last couple of days of practice been because they got beat at A&M on Saturday. And he said it's been great and never led in that game. No, they did not. But Rick said it's been great because it's been physical. physical yep. And he did loves physical practices and it carries over to how they play the game and they do it. Like I said, on both ends of the floor, their bodies are constantly wearing you out. Good cut and blocked. Awaka. That one hurt. Ziegler throwing it up. And knocked away by Devo Davis. And Tennessee is what now four or five blocks in this game. Very alert. Multiple guys have done it. And this time it's the long arm of the law, Tobey Awaka, the backup post player with the erase. Seventy-one forty-nine is our score, and coach, this is what big three-headed monster of volunteers what they've done here. Man, those, these guys are a handful, and they're all different. Ganey, Connect, and Adu, they do it in different ways. But when Connect gets the kind of help that he's getting tonight, Tennessee can beat anybody in the country. And they're sitting there right now as a two seed, Brian. I, I still see a path for them to end up being a one seed. Houston, their non-conference strength of schedule, I think, eventually could move them off the one seed line and a team like Tennessee or possibly now Marquette could slide in to that spot along with Purdue, UConn and Arizona. That one knocked away by Devo Davis. I was talking earlier about how Arkansas, what they are with the first 15 seconds of the shot clock compared to the last 15 seconds of the shot clock. My guy, Will Warren. Stats by Will. If you want to follow college basketball and get deep into some things, that's the guy. And anytime Tennessee's playing, he does a really good job of publishing some deep, some really deep stats. But that was a good one today by my guy Will Warren. Tennessee is outscoring Arkansas since to have 27 to nine. Mm. Connect. Now has 21. That is his 12th 20 point game this season. Well, Dalton Connect got started early, and there's been no answer, no fight back for Arkansas defensively to take this kid away. And you've got to make him work. And if you don't make him work, he'll hang 30 on you on the road. He's tracking that tonight. Mm -hmm. Here's Graham spinning. It's scoring. Basket is good. Jalen Graham. It's amazing how many times you describe him spinning and scoring because that's that's what he is, man. And he's really good. He's great with his feet. He's getting stronger through contact. He gets Mayshack going one direction and spins right back off that pressure. But Tennessee has taken away the strength of Arkansas's offense for the last couple of games. It's been the combination of Graham and Mitchell because they've been hitting them, not letting them get that middle ball screen roll action going has really made life difficult for Arkansas in the paint tonight. Keep in mind, especially for Arkansas, Trevin Brazil is not playing tonight. And imagine if he was playing, it could be quite different. 
you know, at 6'10", and this is a guy who projected to, I mean, there he is. This would be the basically the what, fifth game he's missed because of knee soreness. Yeah, so it's a, a question of, of if and when he's going to come back because he is a talent, not having the type of year that a lot of people thought that he would have. But, well, if your front line is not ready for a heavyweight fight against Tennessee, you, you find yourself down 20 quick. Mm -hmm. Here's Graham asking for it and getting it. Gets doubled and still scores. To me, he's their best inside scorer, Graham. Now, Mitchell can also get it done, more of a forceful guy, but Graham's got some finesse about him. He's got some stuff. He can get an angle on his own. A good drop off for A2. How good is his left hand, right? And he's quick with it. The ball does not get stuck in Adu's hands at all around that rim. Tennessee is double the point output in the paint over Arkansas. They've got 42 now points in the paint. Arkansas just 20. Tennessee, Brian, they play a style that will hold up on a neutral floor in March. It's holding up on the road in this league, but it will hold up in Nashville. It will hold up in that NCAA tournament as well. My Meshack off the mark. Leading blocker, freshman, knocked away. Watch this left hand by Adu. Meshack with a drop off, and that ball gets out of his hand quickly. It's in slow motion, but I'm telling you, that's an unblockable shot. He's a seven footer. He shoots it high, and he gets it off quick. Battle with it. Working on connect. Claw Lawson, the offensive board. And it's Ganey. The Volunteers coming back the other way. Adu looking for it, working on Claw Lawson. There's a reach in by Tremont Mark. His first personal foul. Team foul number seven on the Razorbacks. A frustrating season, to say the least, for Eric Musselman. I mean, this is a guy that's used to, to winning at every stop along the way, and he finds himself with an Arkansas team that just cannot put it all together for any stretch so far this season. They didn't get it done in non-conference play, but you look up and Arkansas struggling mightily to get a win in SEC play, and this is the same team that beat Duke in here. Yeah, That's right. the strength of this league, I'm telling you. It is so deep and so good. But Eric Musselman right now just playing shorthanded, and he knows it. And at the inopportune times, he had Tremont Mark, who was injured at one point. So he had him out of the lineup. Obviously, Trevin Brazil now injured. They could certainly use him. Under 10 minutes left in the game. The freshman. Shot no good, A to another rebound. Wide open three from Meshack. Brian, Tennessee's gap defense has been so consistent and so good in this game. Just multiple orange jerseys for an Arkansas offensive player to look through as he tries to find a seam to attack. And Rick Barnes trusted his defense. Arkansas made a couple of threes early, but they did not drag Tennessee out defensively. And just a clinic by the team in orange on the road tonight on this end of the floor. Well, and that's important considering when you look at what Tennessee, hey, first 20 games of the season, Tennessee was only giving up 65 points yeah. per game. 
You look at the last three games they've had, they've given up, uh, what, an average of 81. I think it was Kentucky hung 92 on them. AM put 85 on them. But the defense came to play today. And that's why Rick Barnes in Knoxville the last three days has said we're going to be physical and we're going to. Hey, Brian, these, these are key guys down the stretch in SEC play. It starts with Jonas Adu. And if he continues to play like he has tonight, man, they are going to be a force. Talon Cooper, now they got it stuck to them tonight at Auburn, but he controls that South Carolina offense so well at that point guard spot. Trey Donaldson for Auburn, it's a key guy. He's taken a hold of that starting spot for Bruce Pearl and Mark Sears at Alabama. Man, that's one of the better scoring teams in all of college ball if Sears continues to really compete on the defensive end. Alabama goes to another level. Those four teams sit at the top of the SEC standings right now. Those are four key guys to keep an eye on as we start coming down the stretch in conference play. Well, he do with a double-double tonight. Yes. He's got 17 and 10. This is what the fifth double-double for him in the last 11 games for Adu. He's a junior out of Durham. And, and Adu tonight, again, just one turnover. Mm. So now he has seven turnovers in 290 minutes of SEC play. And he's always in traffic. Like, his hands are clutch. Ellis in the lane. No, James the rebound. Tried to get it in to Adu, stolen. And Mark will go to the line. See, Dalton could not get ready to check back in. Well, Saturday, triple header on ESPN, Duke, Florida State. That comes away at 2 p.m. Eastern. Then you've got Kansas taking on Oklahoma. And then finally, Kentucky and Auburn square off. It's a sonic blockbuster. Should be another great day of college basketball. Auburn 101, South Carolina 61 tonight in that building. Well, South Carolina won, what, seven, eight straight? Oh, yes, and, and they're the real deal. But Auburn now, uh, they they enforce their will on you as well as anyone in the country, especially on their home floor. And Kentucky, those young guards, they, they don't, they better be ready for what's coming at them on Saturday. I believe game day's there, I know it is. And the jungle, there's not a better student section in all of college basketball right now than the jungle at Auburn. And you can you can talk about Duke, you can talk about whoever you want. There's none better than what Auburn has right now working inside that Neville Arena. Well, you can see Tennessee again, they still have their goal. They they want to win the conference, but can't afford any slip ups. With South Carolina going down tonight and of course Auburn rolling in Alabama as well. Who do you see? Just looking on, on the surface, thinking it takes away the regular season title. Well, I mean, it's, it's still a four or five team race for yeah. sure. I, 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 I like Alabama a lot right now because offensively, they've already gone over 100 points seven times this year. They can explode, Brian, offensively. And defensively, Nate Oates is starting to get some, some, some chops about how his guys are playing. And they pride themselves, Alabama does, on that hard hat mentality, and they're starting to figure it out at the right time. But Auburn is, Auburn's the real deal. This team right now in orange is the real deal. There's multiple legitimate Final Four contenders in the SEC this year. There's multiple Elite Eight, Sweet 16 teams. And that's why I continue to say there's not a league in all of college basketball better than the SEC right now. I have not said that in the past. I've been in this league a long time. Mm -hmm. But there's not a better league than the SEC. Tipped out. Tennessee will run their stuff again. They send the double to Adu, and that pass is stolen. 
Now yeah, the second turnover for Adu in the game. Just a weak pass. The, the softest play by Adu so far in this game was the pass. See, now I'm getting text messages from ADs across the country. And this is a good one, Grand Canyon. Their student section <laughs> out west, it, it's good now. Yeah. I, I, I give them, I'll give them some props. It, it is really good. But I just don't think it's jungle fever. Right. <laughs> How about that defense by the volunteers? Shot clock violation by Arkansas. Largest lead of the game here for Tennessee. Tennessee has no problem guarding you the entire shot clock. They put you in long, deep possessions. If you're not disciplined and tough enough to fight through it, you will have multiple shot clock violations. James. Yes. Brian, aren't they unselfish in Tennessee? They have. Their assist numbers tonight are so good. They just, they move that ball, man. They share it. They keep that floor space. Their off-ball action, their walk-away pin action, their screening, very difficult to defend. And Rick Barnes probably going to start subbing here at any minute because these guys on the floor have played yeoman's minutes. Now, what a performance. They put up a season-high 44 in the paint tonight against Arkansas. Make that 46 and a season high in dunks as well. Those are zone one points. And at least out, that's, that's how Arkansas describes them. And Arkansas had 56 zone one points against Missouri, 42 against Georgia, held in the 20s tonight. That Tennessee defense has owned that three point line and in. Tennessee had lost seven straight in this building. <laughs> by L. Ellis. Texas Tech, as yeah, he weighing in from Texas Tech, it's good. I was there a few years ago when Kentucky came to, to Lubbock for the, for the challenge. Very good student section. Not at the level of the jungle, but very, very good. <laughs> Connect will go to the line. Well, Adu is so good off the move. And, for a low post guy, he doesn't just camp out. He's constantly catching the ball off the move. He screens and flashes to the ball. He'll, he'll get screened and then re-screened, and they, they can roll him. We talked about how good his hands are, but for a post player, you win your position from the waist down, and you score from the waist up. And he is playing as good as he has played in the Tennessee volunteer uniform. Lawson and Mark will have a seat. One of two for Connect. Looks like his night is over with 22 on the night. <laughs> that relationship between Dalton Connect and Rick Barnes is special. I've, I've been blessed to sit in a lot of film sessions with Tennessee this year. And man, he gets lit up time and time again, but he just sits there and takes it. Yes, sir. No, sir. And he told you, like he's told me, he came to Tennessee because he wanted to be coached hard yes. and made into a really good pro. Mm -hmm. And that's exactly the path that he's tracking. Graham fighting hard in the paint, but misses the follow up. Freddie DeLeon has checked in for Tennessee, seeing his first action. Under three minutes. Arkansas ball. It'll stay with Arkansas. They are down big here to Tennessee. Less than three minutes to play. Well, Brian, we've seen the, 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 the good version of Dalton Connect tonight because 
really going to be 22 points. He's made half of his shots. He's made 70% of his free throw attempts. He's only turned it over a couple of times, but he's gotten a massive amount of help. And when this, this version of Tennessee is Final Four legit good. I know they're sitting there as a two seed, so it's not like that's a wow statement, but when they get balance and they're just not always relying on Dalton Connect, they can beat anyone in the country on a neutral floor. What I love about Tennessee this year, Dalton Connect is the type of guy when they get into a, a, a Sweet 16 Elite Eight game and the game's on the line, he can absolutely take over. But their offense is built for point distribution, balance in their scoring, just a beautiful 40 minutes of basketball by Tennessee tonight. You know, Dalton Connect, first Tennessee player with 12 20-point games in a season since Grant Williams did Ooh. it. And that was back in 2018-2019 uh, season. And Grant, you're mentioning with Grant Williams, you've done something special. Mm -hmm. Tennessee has scored 1.3 points per possession. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a crazy high number, especially on the road. That's how good they've been. Well, you talked about, especially when you get into the tournament. I mean, you know this. When you get into that tournament, it is all about guard play. You yep. need a really good point guard and somebody that can get you buckets <laughs> late. And that's exactly what <laughs> they've got. That's who he is, right? You've got Zakai Ziegler, who got great leadership at the guard position, and then you've got Connect, who can get you buckets. Yeah, and, and Adu, I'm, I'm telling you, Adu can. Yeah. I'm not saying he's better than Donovan Klingon or. Zach Eady, but he's not going to be punk. The, Tennessee's not going to just be beaten up on the inside by some of those elite post players. Yeah, he does as good as there is in this league, and there's some good ones in here. And look at Tennessee's resume. Their non-conference strength of schedule was as good as anybody. They got a net of six, an RPI of eight. Already got four quadrant one wins, and they are the real deal. And I will not be surprised at all if they don't work their way into that fourth number one seed in Joe Lenardi's bracket here in the next couple of weeks. You mentioned they do as he knocked down that jumper. This is his third 20-point performance of the season. <laughs> and he makes that one with the left hand. I, mean, oh I know the game's God. over, but that was a ton of contact. Yes. 23 and 12 for Jonas Adu. I might, I might think about getting Adu out. And I think Rick Barnes is thinking the same thing. <laughs> After taking that fall. <laughs> yes. What a night for Jonas Adu. 11 out of 14 from the field. He's got 12 rebounds. He's gotten out in transition multiple times. That's a, that, I mean, that is a foul. That is a hard collision hit, mm -hmm. no matter at what point in the game. And fortunate for Adu in Tennessee that he's fine. And, just a dominating performance by Tennessee on the road. Well, you talked about the volunteers. They've got Vandy, of course, who had that game winner just last night. That comes your way on Saturday. They traveled to Missouri, AM, Auburn, and Alabama. Those last two. Oof. I mean, that's that's a schedule right there. When you get against uh, the rematch against Texas AM, there will be a little bit of bad blood mm -hmm. between those two programs. Mm -hmm. Rick Barnes not happy at all with how that game ended. And Buzz Williams at the center court line calling timeout and it did not sell well with Rick Barnes, nor should it. And then there were those next one, Auburn and Alabama, that could very well decide the SEC regular season title. Think about this. If Alabama were to win the regular season title again this year, Nate Oates will have won five trophies out of the eight that the SEC has handed out since he's been the head coach at Alabama. Mm. Three regular season titles and two tournament titles, possibly right now for Nate Oates. Hey, happy Valentine's Day. You too. Yes. Absolutely. I told my mom I'd wave at her, but I can't wave at her. I say, hey, <laughs> happy Valentine's Day to my mom, Sue, who never <laughs> never misses a game. I love it. I get to, I get to spend some time with my wife and daughter that came with me to the game tonight. That's, that's, the, beauty of, uh, that, way, that's the beauty of having a home game on right. Valentine's Day. I get to see my 
my bride and my daughter, but uh, is that, it's great to spend it with you no, as well, I, I like right? it. I like yeah. it. By the way, happy Valentine's Day, Mom. <laughs> 30 point lead for Tennessee. Mm. Arkansas will be right back at it on Saturday when they take on Mississippi State. And with this loss tonight, be their worst start in SEC play through 11 games since 2009. You might remember. They finished 2 and 14 in 2009 under John Pelfrey. Oh. oh. And you don't want to get anybody hurt with under a minute to go in a 30 point game. Yeah. And Mayshack went, he went high and then he came down hard. I think he's going to be fine. The previous foul is under review. Well, there's contact to the head area by fall. That's what they're going to look at. Pinion grabbing that arm. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, is the grab by Pinion is a, a blow to the head by by fall? I think. Again, those airborne shooters, man, you've got to really protect them. That's what Doug Chow's and Joe Lindsay are looking at. The previous call on the floor is a common foul. It stands as called on the floor. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. Yeah. Dalton Connect and Mayshack go at each other, Brian, about every afternoon after practice. Mayshack, one of the better defenders that there is in, in the SEC, if not the country. And he and Dalton Connect, they go at one another, and that has also escalated the progress of Dalton Connect in terms of the physicality he has to drive the ball with, trying to create his own look, and it, it has made Mayshack a better defender as well. I mean, you've got a premier offensive guy going against an elite defender in Knoxville two or three times a week, and man, these guys love ball. The culture is as good as you're going to find in the college game. And they brought all that and more with them from Knoxville to Fayetteville tonight. Where's loss Arkansas has suffered in this building here in Bud Walton? 32 that was to Auburn that was in back on January and right now it's at 32. Yeah, I was here for that one as well. What are you doing for Valentine's dinner after the game? That's a great question. Hey, I can tell you where a Whataburger is this time of <laughs> yeah, night. Yeah, I was going to say, what's the <laughs> Get your corner table. <laughs> ask for a candle. <laughs> order your Whataburger. <laughs> that's a good night, Brian. Or IHOP, one of the two that's <laughs> by the hotel. That's great. <laughs> Oh my gosh. <laughs> Fantastic. You just kind of sense we both did that Rick Barnes knew his club was ready to play today. Yeah, we, right. we saw him at one o'clock yeah. and he was confident. The guys were dialed in as a very mature team that's built to make a deep, deep, deep run in March are the Tennessee Volunteers. Well, Tennessee ends the streak. They had lost seven straight in this building, not anymore. They get the victory, 92-63. For Jimmy Dykes, I'm Brian Custer. Coming up next, it's SportsCenter. Good night from Fayetteville. Brian G.